Back here on CBS Sports HQ, you're taking a look at the current NFC playoff picture as things stand right now if the season ended today. So the Lions would be in that top spot. They would get the bye. We know they already went out and got some pass rush help in Zedaria Smith. Other division leaders out there, the Commanders, uh, ATL, Arizona in that spot. And then you have the uh, Vikings, Eagles, and Packers in the wild card spots. On the outside looking in, in the NFC, there's a handful of teams that are sitting at 500 and still not in the playoff picture, like the Bucks, the Bears the Niners and the Rams. So let's get into it with Pete and Kyle. We're going to go through the NFC playoff picture and currently right now the Lions they are in that top spot and we know with the trade deadline they went out and got some pass rush help and we were also saying depending on who they get could kind of determine their future and, and how far they could go and what kind of a push they can make and Pete you were saying I think they still need to maybe do some more. One more. Go get okay. somebody else. And, and it, you know, look, there are guys available. You could make a move to go get one. Don't give up a ton because you don't want to impact your team in the future. But Arden Key would be one I would go get. And I would pair him with Zadaria Smith. This team's going to score a lot of points. They're physical. They can run the ball. They're they can bullies. throw it off of that uh, play action. They're great in play action. Ben Johnson's done a great job with the office. Jared Goff has been fantastic. But ultimately, you're going to have to rush the passer because that's what this league is all about. Knock the other guy's quarterback down. If you don't have the elite guy, which Hutchinson was, you may as well have two. So I still think they need to figure that out. And again, they're going to play a lot of games inside. And that's always good for this offense. And it's good when you play with the lead to turn your pass rushers loose. So go get another one. Even without getting Zadarius Smith, I thought this Lions team would definitely end up in the Super Bowl. I said it on Pushing okay. the Pile last week. I really believe you that. I it. believe this is one of those teams <laughs> that just gets off the bus with the utmost in confidence week in, week out because of Dan Campbell, because of Ben Johnson, because of Aaron Glenn. You know what? They ask these guys to go be themselves, and they are every week. They are on the brink of, I don't want to call team dirty but they play on the edge you know you talk about teams playing on the edge that's the Lions they add Zadarius Smith that's the cherry on top if they can get two watch out man you saw that schedule the schedule gets yeah. a little bit tougher now going forward and they got Green Bay with Jordan Love kind of limping around so that and, and in the rain so really quickly before we move on with that schedule in mind and say things stay as they are right now they don't get another pass rusher they just sit with Zadarius Smith here are they still going to remain the, the top team in the NFC, Kyle, when yes. it's all said and done? Okay. Yes. I, I just think it's what their identity is. I think it's who they are week in, week out. They're consistently the best team on the football field. Any football field that they take on Sunday, they're the best team. They will end up with the, the number one seed, but I don't, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win at all. I mean, it's going to be tough to go into Detroit and win, but team gets hot. You know there's a team that can get hot and it would be dangerous for them. And, and the team that can protect their quarterback will give them a lot of problems, I think, down the road. Okay, let's go to the Falcons because they are undefeated right now in the division, which there's a lot of bad teams in there. But they are facing the Saints, who, again, just moved on from Dennis Allen. Do you have faith in this, this Atlanta team, Pete, with Kirk Cousins and the off, uh, weapons that they do have on offense to stay on top of the division? Yeah, I do, in, okay. in large part because I think the Bucs are so banged up. I mean, the Bucs have, have suffered so many injuries. You're playing without your top three wide receivers. That's hard to do. When you look at this Falcons team, they can score, and they're good on offense. We know that. The question becomes how good are they on defense. And you talk about a team that could use another pass oh, rusher. Yeah. They could use one. They need to get somebody who can go in there and help knock the quarterback down uh, because they're going to give they're going to score a lot of points, but they're also giving up a bunch, and that, that's a big concern with them. Hey, uh, this is exactly what they envisioned when they went and got Kirk Cousins this offseason. When they called him and he was in the training room rehabbing and they got him down to Atlanta, they finally got their guy who can make this offense go. He is the maestro for this uh, orchestra, as it were, and you're seeing guys like Darnell Mooney step up in a big way. Bijan Robinson has finally become the guy that we all thought he could be in that running game and it's helping Kirk Cousins. I have the utmost in faith in the Atlanta Falcons and holding up in this division. I think the Falcons have changed Kirk Cousins. You know, we see him swag surfing and, and him in the, uh, the middle of the He's got some huddle. ribs. He's got some ribs he, he now, does have for some sure. Ribs. Wow, that's not, post not the playoffs yet. Is that out yet? Is Riz out? It is. I was going to say, I'm impressed with your knowledge. Kirk's of bringing Riz. Riz back. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, what was playoff. that? It's not the playoffs yet. Okay, so you're not you're not all in on Kirk Cousins well, right now. He's been good, but there have been moments where you've seen him not so good this yeah. season too. All right, let's talk about the Cardinals. Uh, we have to give kudos to Jonathan Gannon and what uh. he's been doing with this team, but that division is it is a tight race. So for now, they're on the top of it, but Sportsline only giving them a 28% chance to actually make the playoffs. Um, Pete, do you? 
have confidence when it's all said and done and maybe the Seahawks figure it out. Maybe they don't. We know Christian McCaffrey, his practice window is open and they're getting healthier. Um, when, when you consider all of that, um, <laughs> Pete, what, just kind of go through this mess here that is the NFC West. How is it going to shake out? I think it's going to be the 49ers ultimately okay. get healthy enough to win the division. But watch out for the Rams. I think they're the two, yep. two teams okay. to keep an eye on, not the Cardinals. But kudos to Jonathan Gannon. He's done a great job with this team. You look at their defense. They're so undermanned on that side of the ball. And yet they show up and play hard, tough, and physical. And Kyler Murray is getting better. I mean, he feels he looks comfortable in that offense. It just seems to work for them. And McBride and Harrison, he has weapons. They can run the ball with Connor. The offense, Paris Johnson, left tackle, has been outstanding this year for the Cardinals. So add it all up, they're going to score points. I worry about the defense, even though Gannon made his mark on the defensive side of the ball, just because they don't have enough guys. They went out and got Barrett Browning from the Broncos. He'll help, but they need more than that. Yeah, and I think when you bring up the two teams in that division with the Rams and the San Francisco 49ers, albeit they've dealt with injuries, they've dealt with their bumps in the road this year, those two teams know how to win football games. And when I look Look at the Arizona Cardinals and all the good things they're doing. They haven't been there yet with this group. The core of the Niners, the core of the Rams, they've won games. They've been in Super Bowls. They've won Super Bowls. That's what I think gives the Niners and the Rams the edge. But you got to give kudos to the Cardinals. They've been playing great. Okay, so if we're giving the edge to the Niners and the Rams, between the two of them. Niners. 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 Because okay. they can run the ball at will. Because they've got the offensive line. They've got the pieces to turn it into a Detroit Lions-style game where Brock Purdy doesn't have to do too much. Yeah. We know that the Rams have to rely on Matt Stafford. The protection's got to hold up. Both their receivers have to be healthy. Puka can't cut, punch a guy in the face. But for the Niners, you can hand it to any number of running backs. They're going to make hay. Plus, when you really want to get to it, the stars decide things, and the Niners roster is loaded with stars. Stars. It is. Are you considering Brock Purdy as a star? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, but Disrespect. Purdy. Disrespect. I just McCaffrey had to ask. That's been a back. conversation for a long no, time. McCaffrey when he's back. Trent Williams. George yep. Kittle. Oh. And Debo. I mean, you go to the other side. Fred Warner. Bosa. I mean, they're it's loaded crazy. with stars on that side of the, uh, yep. on that roster, and they, they decide ultimately decide who wins or loses. Yeah. So predicting the Niners to come out of that division. And we their have coaches the, are stars. Yeah, they're great. The Vikings, Eagles, and Packers right now in that current wild card spot. Um, Kyle, out of any of those guys, who do you think could maybe slip out of the uh, playoff picture? In, in a bad way I could see it happening to the Vikings honestly I, I could totally see that happening to the Vikings and, and on the other side it's I've fallen back in love with the Philadelphia Eagles and you want to talk about a team with stars at the receiver position at the O-line position at the running back position Jalen Hurts being asked to do less I really love that, to see that from the Eagles but for the Minnesota Vikings you brought it up Yes, they have great scheme. Yes, they have a great coordinator on both sides of the football. But I have concern when they get into some of these fist fight in the phone booth type matchups with some of these bully ball type teams. Does the scheme even matter or has it become a Johnny's and Joe's type game? Yeah, because they get run on. And that they're not big. They're a little team. They're a little defense. And when you get run, you know, those teams get run on. And you look at the Lions, physically you can go maul them. So that that is a good the advantage the Vikings have is when they do get in second and third and long, they can throw so many different looks at you. But if you run it at them, they're not going to get into those second and third and long. So Stay I think that's schedule. a disadvantage for them. Plus, Sam Darnold, he's done some really good things. At some point, you, you, you are concerned a little bit that he might become Sam Darnold again. That's and, always and who is Jordan Love? Jo who is Jordan Love? What is Jordan Love? Jordan Love is he going to be healthy this year? That's the concern. And when he is, is he going to throw you the, the interception no, pick six before Jordan, the half? When Jordan Love is healthy, he's darn good. The question becomes, when does he get healthy? Because okay. he hasn't been healthy all year. And I still think the Packers have a really good team. Good offensive line, skilled players, can run, run the ball. ball. Jordan Love, defensively, a lot of good players. Jeff Halfley's done a nice job. They will still make a push. Don't okay. count that. Out. So for you, it's the Vikings as well that could potentially of split. those three teams. I'm more leaning toward the Eagles. I, okay. I don't like what I've seen from the Eagles. They, they, they almost blew a game last week in large part <laughs> because of their coach. If you went to, if you ranked the coaches of those three teams, big disadvantage yeah. for the Philadelphia Eagles because you know Kevin O'Connell's done a really good job. Matt Lafleur is a great coach, and I don't know about Nick Sirianni. Goes for it. Up seven, up six, late in the game. Instead of kicking a field goal, he goes for it. You go up nine. That's common sense. He goes. He went for two a couple different times. Then chase points. I don't think he understands situational football at all. So I'm concerned about him for the Eagles. And they're looking for a reason to turn on him in Philadelphia, aren't they? They're always waiting to yeah, see him. But you know what he did? He did the old change the look. Yeah. You know, when a coach starts changing his look, that means he's trying to take the focus off the stuff he's doing on the field. Okay. That's going nice through there. something. So that's like a, Eberflus a, did that. Yes. Changed his look. A red
red flag alert if yeah. for, for yeah. coaches Change in the, the NFL. Okay. needs a mustache and a pair of sunglasses <laughs> right now. Pete, Kyle, we appreciate it walking us through the NFC playoff picture. And, of course, we have you covered right here at CBS Sports HQ all football season long. Everything you need to know, news, highlights, scores. If any NFL head coaches are changing their look, Pete will let you know. It is all here on HQ.